Hey guys, so uh, many of you have been asking questions in the comments section. So I've been answering over there, but I thought that what I can do is take the most popular questions and just create small sessions and try to explain those in the small sessions. So uh, what you'll get now is, is are a series of short videos in which I'll try to answer some of those questions. So one of the most common questions I'm getting in the massive MIMO video is to talk about the SSB beams and beam sweeping. Now what is uh, a SSB beam and how beam sweeping works? Let's have a quick look at that. Now um, it is open to vendor implementation but uh, there can be multiple SSBs. Now what is the SSB? SSB is the synchronization signal block. It is the one that carries the PSS, the SSS and the PBCH. So it is the signal that is used uh, for the UE to synchronize to the system and also it is the channel which is being used to get the RSRP. So um, if you get the RSRP from the SSB, especially you actually look into the SSS part of the SSB to get the RSRP and uh, once you get the RSRP from there then you try to attach to the cell if let's say the RSRP is good enough and also during mobility you need to move from one cell to another cell like an A3 event then the RSRP of the neighbor cell and the serving cell it also comes from the SSB especially the SSS part. So that is the what, what the SSB uh, does but now let's talk about how the SSB beam sweeping works. So let's take this example here. Here we have uh, a typical frame. Uh, so we have time slots here. Now in this example we have let's say four SSBs. Now what it means is that you will have an SSB burst. Some vendors can have four, some can have six, some can have eight. So it can vary uh, vendor to vendor. So let's take an example where you have four SSB beams in one SSB burst. This is the first one. So after some time, the second one comes. After some time, the third one comes. After some time, the fourth one comes. Now each of this SSB uh, is part of a single burst. And usually the difference between them is just a few symbols. So it's we're talking about microsecond level uh, difference. And then the next burst will come after 20 milliseconds or 40 milliseconds, whatever, whatever the SSB period you have set. So let's take an example here now. Let's see we have the first SSB. So what the G0B will do is that it will send this SSB over a beam. Like this one goes on this beam. Then after some time the second SSB comes. So the second SSB will be sent on this beam. Then the third SSB comes and it will be sent on this beam. And then the fourth one comes and it will be sent on a separate beam. So if you see here, we can see that each SSB is moving in the uh, in this direction from let's say let's say from uh, left to right or in clockwise direction. So what it effectively is doing is that it is sweeping the whole cell. So this is why that we call it beam sweeping because we are sweeping the whole cell. Now why it is important? Let's say we have a UE over here. Now when the first beam comes, it will measure that beam and will get the RSRP value. But because this beam is not directed to this UE, so, so the RSRP might be a lower value. For instance, this beam gives it RSRP of minus 100 dBm. Then the second beam comes and it measures the second beam as well because it is at the center of the second beam. So the RSRP should be higher. Maybe it's minus 90 dBm. Then the third beam comes again. It's not in the center. So maybe the RSRP will be minus 100 dBm. The fourth beam comes. It's further away. Maybe the RSRP is minus 105 dBm. So the UE will find out that SSB number two or SSB beam number two is the best fit is the best candidate for this UE. So it will let the G node B know that this beam is the most optimum candidate for me. So the G node B will now know where the UE is located as well, right? Because now G node B knows that my beam two is going in this direction and the UE is saying that beam two is the best candidate. So G node B now also knows where the UE two is, right? So in this way, the, G the UE will calculate the best beam for it and then 
the GNODB will also know where the UE is. And then based on that, GNODB can, it can help GNODB in moving towards the traffic beams and giving it the most optimized beam to continue. Because uh, once you attach to the cell, until you have sent out the PMI and the CQI reports, the CSI reports, the, the uh, GNODB will not know where you are, right? So as explained in the message MIMO video, the PMIs tell the GNODB where the UE is, right? But before that, before the UE has shared its PMI, the GNODB can use the SSB beam information to direct all the uh, traffic and all the other channels to, for this UE using that beam. <coughs> So this is uh, the important of the SSB beams. And uh, if you have more SSBs, then the beams, uh, you will have more beams. For instance, if you have eight SSBs, then you will have eight beams, right? And if you have eight beams, that means the beams will be more narrower, right? Because you are sweeping the same amount of cell, right? If you have more beams, they will be more narrower. They might give you a better SSB quality and SSB SINR, for instance. So this is uh, what the beam sweeping is and uh, how it works out. And uh, in the next video, we'll talk about the differences between the SSB beams and the beams that come from the PMIs, for instance, and then the beams that come from the SRS. So what are the differences between these three types of beams? Okay, um, stay tuned. It will come up shortly. Thank you so much.